Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Uh, we're going to be starting our program promptly in about five minutes. So until then, go ahead and continue watching the slideshow and pictures and feel free to talk in chat and interact with all of us since we can't see you in person. Thanks again for being here. Good morning, everyone. First, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time 
to join us for our annual Hands Across Corvallis fundraiser. I'm Ashley Chavez. I'm the current chair of the Corvallis Public Schools Foundation Board of Trustees. And last year when I spoke at this event, I'm sure many of you remember last year, there were almost 300 of us packed into the Corvallis High School. And today, as I was you know, writing my remarks, not that I wrote them today, <laughs> wrote them a while ago, but as I was preparing them, I realized you know, it's one thing to speak to a group of people when all of their attentive faces are staring back at you. You know, you know, you've got their attention. You're seeing heads nods, head nods. You're hearing laughter. And it's another thing entirely for me to sit here and just talk to my computer screen. All I see is a picture of myself. I don't get to see any of you. And I know we're all getting used to virtual events. And I think we can just all admit that it's really impossible to stay focused. You know, our attention is constantly being pulled in different directions. We've got those little email notifications popping up in the corner of our screen and phone calls in our office coming through. We've got our kids in the background asking for help, you know, packages coming to our door, distracting us. And so today, I just really want to ask you to create some mental space and time for, for this program today. I know it's a really big ask. But our students and educators really need you to hear the message that we have for you today. And I want you to see the success of the dollars that you've given. And I want you to see how your donations can further support the critical needs that we have right now. And it takes a lot of courage for our students to speak. And it took them a lot of time to put their words together for your consideration today. I know you're really going to enjoy hearing from them and learning all about their stories. And I just really want to say, even as we still are collectively working through a really difficult time together, that there is a lot to celebrate. And so, yes, there are extreme challenges that we're working through, but there are so many moments of success. And so today, even as we hear about the challenges and the work ahead of us, I just really want to encourage everyone to stay focused on the positive. So next, you're going to be hearing a message from our Board of Trustees. Once again, I want to say welcome to our program today and thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. Hi everyone, we're the Corvallis Public Schools Foundation Board of Trustees. We really wish we could be saying hello to you today in person, but instead, just like our students and educators, we're here to say hello through the power of Zoom. We know that meeting like this can be difficult, frustrating, and sometimes a little funny. We have all experienced slow connections, cameras pointed in the wrong direction, kids in the background needing attention, and even the dulcet tones of barking dogs. This is frustrating enough in a business meeting, or even when we're just spending time chatting with friends. But these are just a few of the challenges facing our students and teachers during this unique school year. You will see today that the Corvallis Public Schools Foundation has been working tirelessly this year to help students and families through this time of crisis. While our mission hasn't changed, the way we support our schools and students has shifted focus. We greatly appreciate your continued support as we navigate the current reality. The theme for today's event is resilience, care, and connection. Because we have seen resilience in the attitude and work ethic of our students. We've seen care in the dedication of our educators and the creativity and flexibility they bring to their virtual classrooms. And we've seen outreach and connection through the support of students and their families during this pandemic with support from the foundation. Since March, we've been able to provide over $300,000 in grants, but there's still more work ahead of us. To keep these critical efforts moving forward, we need all of us working together. Your time with us here today means a lot. It means that you care about our community, about our students, and about education. And to that end, we would all like to say, thank you.
Good morning, and thanks so much for joining us. My name is Leif Gifford, and I have the privilege of serving as the Executive Director of the Corvallis Public Schools Foundation. Wherever you are this morning, with family or alone, at the breakfast table or the office, I hope you're in good health and spirits. Today's themes, care, connection, and resilience, are important for all of us. Even though we can't gather in person, I wish those things for you. I'd first like to say thank you to our outstanding Board of Trustees for its perseverance and positivity in a year unlike anything we've ever experienced. They, along with my colleagues, Hannah Keim and Carla Callahan, have adapted and even thrived as a team and made the work meaningful. I also want to thank our many event hosts who rose to the challenge of bringing all of us together today. I'd like to take just a moment to recognize all of the sponsors that stepped up this year to support Hands Across Corvallis. Our champion sponsor is Hub Barker Erlings Insurance. Our promoter sponsors are DLR Group, Ola Renshaw Wealth Management, and Wenaha Group. Our advocate sponsors are Benton County Schools Credit Union, Citizens Bank, the Corvallis Clinic, Corvallis Kids Pediatric Dentistry, Corvallis Radiology, Fortis Construction, Girding Builders, Hurley Financial, Jacobs Engineering, North Point Dental, Pacific Power Foundation, Samaritan Health Services, Valley Eye Care, and Willamette Valley Planning. Thank you to all of our supporting sponsors. Lastly, our video sponsor this year is Horsepower Productions. Again, thank you to all of our incredible sponsors for your continued support. To everyone watching, please share your gratitude for these local businesses in the comments. 25 years ago, a group of community members had the enthusiasm, grit, and skill to start a foundation for the benefit of our school district. Without the efforts of our founding trustees, Gretchen Morris, Tony Van Vliet, Bond Starker, Mario Pastega, and Jim Oldfield, we would not have the organization that we have today. Our program this morning sheds light on some of the ways our community came together to support students and families this year. When schools closed last March, hundreds of donors responded to our call to action. Very generous gifts from community partners like Citizens Bank and the Benton Community Foundation helped build momentum to ensure that students had access to internet, food, hygiene items, and other necessities to make at-home learning feasible. Many people contributed for the very first time, enabling us to make a bigger difference than ever for kids. I have seen time and again how these donations are changing lives, and I want to personally thank you for being part of this effort. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge the calm, steady leadership of Corvallis School District Superintendent Ryan Noss throughout the pandemic. We are thankful for his tireless efforts and collaboration. And now, here he is to speak with us about the state of our school district. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be with you this morning. The Corvallis Public Schools Foundation plays an important role in bridging the community and our schools and bringing us together at this event. The COVID-19 pandemic has provided challenges and opportunities like nothing we have experienced before. As we approach the one year mark, I'm happy to be joining you today to celebrate the ways we have pulled together as a community to support our students and the work ahead. We have experienced great loss during the pandemic loss of loved ones, financial difficulty, and the loss of spending time together with family and friends. We can't wait to return students to our schools. Recovery from the trauma of the COVID-19 pandemic will not happen overnight, 
and we will continue to work together to provide help and caring connection. There are some silver linings that I'd like to share. Access to computers for all of our students, hotspots, free meals, a community food pantry, and access to hygiene products. In all of these areas, donations through the Corvallis Public Schools Foundation have enhanced our efforts. We have reached out to our most vulnerable students and their families with the message of care, connection, and hope. We were able to do more because of the foundation's focused support. A huge silver lining is our recently released 2020 graduation rate. Corvallis is a community that cares deeply about public education and it shows in the outcomes for our students. Last year, a record setting 90% of our students graduated with their four year cohort. While last school year ended with distance learning, this graduation rate represents the culmination of our students 13 year journey. Corvallis students navigating poverty achieved their highest rate of graduation at 83%, which is up 5% from the previous year. This is the fourth consecutive year of improvement for this student group. We are deeply grateful for the additional resources from the community donations through the Corvallis Public Schools Foundation to meet additional needs of our most vulnerable students. These investments are paying off. We also want to acknowledge and celebrate the success of our Latino students. While the 2020 graduation rate is slightly lower than the year previous year, 88% of our Latino students graduated on time. The graduation rate for this group has improved significantly since 2014 when it was at 65%. More students than ever have earned the Oregon seal by literacy. This is an important indicator of academic rigor and success. The seal of biliteracy demonstrates how levels of cultural competency and academic proficiency in two languages. 95 Corvallis seniors earned this recognition last year compared to 30 in 2015, the first year of the program I was offered. Students receiving this award have a deeper understanding of self and others and deeper cultural understanding. Nearly 18,000 schools nationwide were ranked on six factors based on state assessment, graduation rates, and how well they prepare students for college. We're proud of the fact that both CHS and Crescent Valley remain on the US News and World Report Best High Schools list. As we begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel for our students, there are four key areas that will be part of our resumption plan. The goal is to re-engage our students and families. The focus is on academic engagement, and limited and sometimes lost relationships during the pandemic. For student and family connection, we will need to continue to support the basic needs of families while they recover from the events of the past year. In mental health continuity and service, we recognize that trauma isn't short-lived, rather support through mental health will need to continue for the next two to three years. While our staff have worked in creative ways our ability to work closely with our students has been inherently limited and there is much work to do in academic support and credit recovery. And finally, our high school students have lost opportunities. We will need to reignite them through student internship and career preparation. Our first district priority is staff and student health and safety. As a school district, we are adapting to the new conditions presented by the COVID-19 pandemic and continue to make decisions focused on health and safety, student achievement, equitable systems, and in-person resumption. Our staff are working hard to make certain we are providing the support and resources that families need. Every day, I witness the commitment of our staff who provide meals, clean and maintain our buildings, and provide instruction, care and connection with students and families. We are grateful for the focused efforts the Corvallis Public Schools Foundation to support this work. I'd like to close by sharing a poem that was collaboratively written by students in our WINGS program at Crescent Valley High School. This program serves our developmentally diverse students ages 18 to 21. It's titled Hope. Hope, it's a light shiny blue like the stars twinkling in the sky. It's soft and smooth like my favorite warm jacket. It's like the smell of dinner as I walk down the stairs. 
Maybe it's ice cream. It's voices raised together in song, rejoicing because of hope. That was written by Hannah, Melissa, Mira, Aiden, Maya, and Laura. And with this poem of hope, I wanna say thank you to our community and the foundation. Program that was funded by the Corvallis Public Schools Foundation and made a difference for our families throughout the pandemic. The foundation at the end of last school year uh, quickly jumped on creating a, pro a program for us, which was uh, the Care and Connect program. It was to care and, and connect with families um, throughout the summer who, like students, sometimes would fall between the cracks um, and lose contact with, with, with us as educators, with us as, as an education system and the uh, Corvallis School District. There are a lot of families right now in our community who are really struggling. Um, some of them have not struggled in the past and some of them have been laid off um, or had other hardships that were a result of COVID and they're experiencing new hardships and new difficulties and our district's ability to know that that was happening and to create a program and kind of rise to that occasion and meet those needs was really incredible and the foundation is the only reason we were able to do that. We needed a team of, of educators, of support staff kind of across the board um, who would be able to just reach out to families and let them know that they had a support person there and that could be just someone to talk to, another adult. Um, some of our families are pretty isolated and they might be a single parent at home with four kids and they actually don't get a lot of adult conversation or a supportive person that they can reach out to and talk to about some of the challenges that they're experiencing. If you hear a human voice that is concerned and caring and just right there with you, you're likely to connect to that and that's what I really was trying to do this summer and what I really love about just at least being present with the students and then some of the family members and even staff members, like they are going through their own things. Like this is hard being online, you know, just being human and making sure that we convey that everybody matters. I personally believe that, you know, education opens doors to endless opportunities and through education, you break cycles, family cycles, uh, negative cycles you've had in life, um, like in my situation. If it wasn't for a foundation, actually, in my case, um, I wouldn't be where I am today. We know that kids struggle to learn when they don't have food on the table um, and when they don't have stable housing and maybe when their power is turned off. And we know that meeting those needs for families allows students to be more successful in school. And it allows them more equal access to education. Sometimes what families need is just to be able to, to talk, to vent. And for me to be able to do that and hear families out was, was great. I mean, I was, that, that's what you, they needed. And, and they needed somebody who they can, that could understand what they were going through. My sister is a sixth grader and so I'm thinking about my students, they're sixth graders, and I think about what they're going through and I think about what my mom and dad are doing for my sister. Um, you know, and again, that, that feeling guilty, I, I wanted to help. Having the funds that we are provided from the foundation allows us to also be flexible in the ways that we meet needs for students um, and to approach it really with an equity lens, um, knowing that each family's needs are not the same. If we didn't have funds, that were available to us, again, in that flexible way, a lot of needs would go unmet in our district. And it all leads back to kids being able to access education. Good morning. My name is Kevin Dougherty, and I have the honor and privilege of serving as a trustee for the Corvallis Public Schools Foundation. Thank you to the students, staff, and teachers for your bravery and willingness to share your experiences with us. We recognize each of us have been impacted and have had varying experiences during this pandemic. Yet, your time with us has demonstrated your care, connection, 
and importantly, resiliency. The resiliency brings me to a quote from the late great Dr. Maya Angelou, where she stated, I can be changed by what happens to me, but I refuse to be reduced by it. This pandemic has indeed changed us, but we will not be reduced by it. Now I have the pleasure to introduce our second video, which is geared towards resiliency. And I do hope that it resonates with each and every one of you. Thank you and enjoy. Um, when we had the school closure in the middle of March and said, okay, everybody go home, we're going to do what we can, we'll see you in a couple weeks, right, that was the initial setting. And so people went home, they didn't go home thinking they were going to be home for a long time. And so not just students, but staff left, literally left their, a lot of stuff at school, left their thoughts at school, went home, and then, okay, now we need to do school. To be honest, I was very anxious over summer. Um, my concern was how I'm going to connect with my students through a screen. There are many challenges uh, because this is a new format for everyone and not only for the teachers but also for the students and the families and the community in general. I've always been someone where school doesn't come naturally to me and so I do have to work harder and I do have to go through more things than some other students. I've always enjoyed being able to separate my home from school and um, the fact that I can't do that this year, now it's like I don't want to be home ever because now it's like my work, it's like my school, it's everything. Mm, what makes it harder is like having my own space because I have siblings and we have like a small space in the house. So everyone needs a table to write on things. And my brother is on the, um, on the class and I'm in class. And with the teachers hearing what my brother's saying and her, his teacher is hearing what I'm saying and it's really hard to communicate with the teachers because of internet connections and anything like with internet problems it was just really hard it was really hard to go on time to class because i would be doing other things at home so it's hard to do both at the same time so many of my friends are like falling so behind because they like it really isn't school it's just like i can deal with it but i know that most other people like they really don't like not being able to have a teacher five feet away from you, not being able to like have all the all of the resources that the school has, like a printer and things like that. It's a lot more isolating because it doesn't feel like the resources that were once available are still available. I know for everyone, the lack of social interaction among our peers, I think we, we didn't really know how much we needed that to just be at school with other people. I've all been around people in sports my whole life and that's definitely a bit of struggle, but I have learned that like I can get through it because this year has been crazy. If I can get through this year, then I should be perfectly fine. In this case right now, we're adapting and we're learning how to survive and how to build better friendships and how to teach ourselves in school. And it's really interesting and it's definitely made me kind of mature in a way. Well, I'm a little bit lucky considering like I've just adapted to it really well. But there's always that opportunity to connect with your teachers, get help when you need it. Um, and I mean, they're great. You know, they, they have such open personalities, you know, they're not just like closed off all the time. So that makes it a whole lot easier. Uh, I'm one of the rare people who actually benefited from the all online this year. I had not so great grades and this year I really just did my best and tried to keep it in stride and I was able to graduate early and go to college. So When I'm at home in my room, like I'm in like my element. I can get done, things done fast. I understand if I need help, I always have help right there, like my mom. And teachers, I, I asked a lot of my teachers for help this year. I really appreciate what the teachers are doing. I like, 
I feel like a really empathetic person. I feel really bad seeing all the teachers just, all they want to do is be with us kids. Like that is their whole job. And I feel bad that they can't be with us anymore. And we don't turn on our cameras and we don't interact with them as much. Um, so I just want to thank the teachers and I love every single teacher at College Hill. Like you guys are so helpful. Uh, it really means a lot having someone um, in your life that cares about you and knowing that they're not there just because they have to be. Um, I would say specifically Justin Volker is one of those people. He reaches out to me um, on a weekly basis. We see each other every week and he, he pushes me, I would say, on and off the field if you know what I mean. He really um, he does a good job and the school, they do it too. It's, it's an all-around thing. Mr. Boring, he's been great for me. He's always helped me and even when I was the kid who was getting in trouble in class, he still had a special place in his heart for me, so I'm very thankful for that. During this whole time, it's, it's not going to get worse. You know, it's still going to get better. You just have to think positive. That's, that's my motto is think positive and then another thing is stay focused and stay strong. That's what my grandpa always says. I, I talk to a lot of staff, and it is very hard. Um, they, they miss the students. They miss the kids. They miss the families, so. And it's, it's awkward, and not everybody handles it the same. Not everybody's great about it. I mean, that includes students, staff, and parents, and administrators. Um, we, we have our moments where, you know, we might lose it, uh, but the bottom line is, is I just want people to know that yeah, the students are struggling and it's hard, but they're soldiering through and the staff are too. My students are the ones who inspire me to get up every morning. Just to go and connect with them via Zoom. And I don't know what surprises are expecting me each day. And, and I know I have a, a lot of feelings like, I'm glad to see them and I see on their faces, they're all glad to see each other too. So it's, it's, it's so wonderful that we still have some sort of communication, some sort of connection, and, and that we are together in this. The feelings is different in every single group because my students make it different, and they make it interesting for me. And they are the ones why I'm still doing this and waking up with a smile every day. I think that, that the fact that uh, teachers and, and people that are in, involved in the community uh, had a better sense of what the needs are for these families uh, is, a, is a great asset. So the fact that donors are, ch are ch channel channeling this to the foundation is, is, a, is a great uh, opportunity uh, for to be distributed in, in a more fair way for the families that need it. So when you have a foundation that can do that, then people see what this foundation's doing. They go, oh, that's something I can get behind and I can support. We're lucky. We're really lucky in Corvallis um, to have that. I think what the foundation does is amazing. You know, helping families in need, students in need during these times where um, a lot of my students, because I know of this, because they talk to me, their parents, they have lost their jobs, um, they don't have a house where to live in. And getting all this help, at least you know I have something to eat. Like there's no words to describe that. Um, I'm from Costa Rica originally, and never seen something like this before. Um, I think it's great that they don't only help them with food, supplies, but with technology, like trying to reach the students, um, it's just, there are no words to describe the, the work that they do for our students and our community. Good morning to all of you, and thank you so much for giving your precious time to join us. I'm Mike Sheets, past chair of the foundation board, given the task of closing out our presentation this morning. Your generosity and compassion for our students and staff is incredible. I know you have done so much already and I wanna personally thank you for it. You have just heard the impact you have had through your support of the programs addressed by students, teachers, and staff. 
A tremendous example of that was the video regarding the Care and Connect program. Avi, Sarah, and Anne made so clear the importance of the ability to stay connected with our students and families while unable to have them in the classroom. I fear not being able to connect with you online, but their message handled that for us. Be sure to share the videos with your friends who couldn't be with us this morning. We need all the help we can get. I imagine most of you have already been moved enough by what you have heard this morning that you don't need to be asked to give. But I can't take that chance. It's too important. Having expressed my thanks for what you have all done, we haven't done enough yet. We aren't done with our obligations to the future. We will continue to make a difference and we have to start right now. We can only imagine the extra robust program work needed to catch our students back up this year after the setbacks they have faced at no fault of their own. That goes for the kindergarten kids who need interpersonal connection to our high school juniors who face great obstacles achieving on-time graduation. There will be more surprises ahead and we have to help our schools be prepared for them. I am asking you to join together so that every child has the opportunity to reach their potential, even during these unprecedented times. Every one of us has needed help along the way, and now we have the ability and opportunity to pay it forward. I know Elena and I feel lucky every day to not be struggling in the way so many unfortunately are. So many students and families are fighting to get through this. A recent national study showed 28% of teachers are more likely to leave the profession due to the stress of the pandemic. Let's step up together today to show them we recognize their sacrifice and that we truly care, need them, and are willing to sacrifice a little ourselves to support them. The problems our student population faces right now have increased in both breadth and width, depth, depth, excuse me. More students than ever need our help. We know the number of students in poverty has increased due to COVID. We estimate we have 250 unhoused students. Food service is currently providing meals to about 1200 kids a day at nine sites around town. Parents cannot get meals at mealtimes if they're working or have no transportation. Families who can't get to the meal sites are being referred to the Welcome Center, which is supported by your foundation dollars. <clears throat> Those who needed us before the pandemic need us even more now. I'm sure you could sense that when listening to Aaron, Gloria, Ruben, and all nine amazing and grateful students who beautifully shared their thoughts and wishes with us this morning. Due to extraordinary circumstances this year, we have to be extraordinary in our generosity to fill the need for vital programs. We need to raise at least $100,000 today. With over 300 of us joining together for this call, if we each stretch to give what we can, we can surpass our goal and show our students, teachers and staff members, we know how very valuable they are to us. We truly have an opportunity to make our greatest impact ever on our students' education. I know we are all ready to do this, and here's some ways to give. You can give online using your credit card through our secure website. You can mail your gift, making checks payable to CPSF. You can give over the phone, ask about gifting stock or making a wire transfer, or get other questions answered by calling the foundation office at 541-757-5857. I am so grateful for all of you who are here to help this morning. Thank you on behalf of the foundation for your time and selfless generosity. Your sacrifice today will truly make a difference in the lives and futures of so many who need our support. Thank you so much. Make this a great day.
Like me. Like me. Like me. Like me. Like us. <laughs>